Welcome back to my animal education series. So today I'm building another enclosure for my, my animal collection. So So I'm using this 20 gallon lawn behind me. Um, I believe it's 30 lawn by a foot tall and a foot uh, back. So I'm trying to do a really awesome bioactive enclosure and try to experiment with some different things I haven't used before in any of my other enclosures. I just got a whole new tank because if I do it on my existing enclosures I have to take the animal out and they're out of their home for days and sometimes um, like a week or two at a time. That's a super inconvenient for the animal, it provides a lot of stress and I just don't want to deal with that. So my plan is to put some fire belly toads in here and I don't plan on getting those for like another two months at this point in time because I want to make sure that um, all the plants and the soil and uh, the water feature and everything in there is doing great before I introduce any animals. Let's get started. First off, I got a Reptiflow 200. So this is just a recycling pump, it's not an actual filter. This will just keep going with the water feature I want to put in there. I'm going to put some filter medium um, on this little box I'm going to build. I'll show you guys more about that later because I'm still working on how I'm actually going to make that. Here I got some leftover silicone. I did buy another uh, container of this just in case I used too much. Um, but this will be used for putting like eco earth onto the uh, spray foam that I'm going to show you guys here in a second. And just kind of making sure a bunch of other stuff sticks together which I will show you. Here I got some eco earth. This will be used onto the silicone and as part of our substrate, which I'll explain later. We got earthy soil, which will help do the same thing. This is a little bit different uh, texture there. We got some river pebbles here. These are the larger uh, pebbles here, because um, behind it we have pea pebbles, which are a lot smaller. The pea pebbles will be in the water area of the enclosure, and these river pebbles will kind of be as a false bottom in the land area. I got some leftover tubing here that fit our pump perfectly so that was super convenient. I have no clue what size this is but all I know is that it works. Get into the Amazon stuff here. We got some great stuff, Pond and Stone. So this is a waterproof expanding foam that is used uh, to seal leaks and stuff like that so I knew this would work pretty well. I uh, also do want to mention that Pretty much the basis of this entire enclosure is off of what Serpa Design on YouTube has done. He has a much bigger channel than me and he's been doing this for a lot longer than me. So I copied a lot of his ideas and a bunch of what he's doing. In this bag here, I bought two and a half pounds of slate stone that we'll use in the water feature. Reach in here real quick. Just a bunch of stones like this. I uh, wonder if it's even focusing on that. Probably not. And just some little stuff like that. Basically inside the, oh, I want to have a little stream and then these small rocks will be sitting on the bottom and on the sides make it uh, look a whole lot more natural. All right, put that back in there. Scoot that. We got a big box over here. So I bought a bag of sphagnum moss. Um, this is a, this is a different packaging because of the pandemic going on. This is questionable, but this is like three dollars, so I'm like, why not? Here I got some flu-ball stratum, so this will help a lot of the aquatic plants kind of get their roots down and grow, and it has a lot of nutrients and minerals for them. And then when I also eventually put shrimp into the water portion of it, this will be really good for them as well. Here's this other thing in the silicone that I got. And I got three things of co fiber liner. I think this is like seven or eight dollars on Amazon. I was like five dollars for one or eight dollars for three. I'm like, I might as well get three of them. So that's all that I've got right now. I did also buy sand for my substrate, but Amazon didn't deliver that yet for some reason, but that should be later uh, today. Let me take you guys off the tripod and kind of show you guys what I want to do with the tank. Alrighty, here's the plan. So I'm going to do about a 50-50 land to water ratio. I try to do it at a little bit of an angle here so I can see more of the shoreline, some of the plants and the rocks I'm going to have on there. And then somewhere back here, I want to have the recirculating pump, pump water back here. But if I do it about here, I can have the stream kind of curve and go back into the water area. 
And I want to have a bunch of aquatic plants in there, kind of have it self-filtering. Along with a bunch of uh, beneficial bacteria I want to have over uh, with the pump. So it has to go through all the beneficial bacteria and the filter medium there before it goes back into the pump and back it down. Then over here, I'm going to have a land area with a bunch of substrate, which I'll explain more when I make that. Which might be in this video, might be in the part 2 version of this, but um, th actually I think it would be in part 2. Obviously I'm going to make this into two parts. Part 1 will be kind of just doing the construction of this with the foam and the silicone, the pump, kind of getting that figured out. And then part 2 will be substrate and plants and stuff like that. And then once all that is figured out and the plants are doing well and the enclosure is doing well, I will do another update video, which probably won't be a full episode, maybe like a bonus video of actually introducing the toads into this enclosure. Without further ado, let's get some of the stuff that I put back in the boxes and start building stuff. Alright, so I used the entire can in here. As you can see, I tried to build this up a lot higher because obviously a stream needs to go down. I tried to build this up more. Depending on how big this gets by the end of the day, because it typically will expand for about 30 minutes to an hour and then it cures in 8. But in 8 hours I'll be at work, so I'll continue this tomorrow. Um, I was able to get my shoreline in, and depending on how much it expands over the next half hour to an hour, then um, that's when I'll decide if I'll buy another can or not to build this up more. And obviously if I build this up more, I'll have to build the stream up more. But I'm hoping it um, expands enough that I can just cut away with a knife. From just the way it's looking even now, I do think I will buy another can to just kind of make everything taller. Um, I have work by the time this thing will cure, so we'll continue this on tomorrow. Alright, I'm using my phone. It's not great, but it's working. Actually, I'm going to set it about right there in the corner. So, you can so. see back here that this is the back of the stream. I wanted this to be taller than this. So, I already have another uh, can of foam coming in. And also, since I didn't play on it uh, expanding so much, this can is now stuck in the foam. But I can just rip that out. It's not a big deal. Um, so, I already ordered another can of foam so I can touch this up. And I need to uh, touch this up as well over here. Let's move my light. All this, even though this looks like a blob, it will get touched up. Most people recommend using like a razor scraper to cut this, and I don't have a razor scraper. So I have my variety of cutting utensils, uh, knife number one, and then knife number two. So using those, I'm going to try to be very careful because they are both very sharp, and cut this down. A bunch of the top of this will come off uh, for the stream because it doesn't need to be nearly that high. I'm looking probably around here. Also, that foam there isn't as tall, so I will touch up this area as well there. Oh, I want to get the, another foam can. Amazon says it'll be here next Saturday. Today is Saturday the 6th of June. Oh. We'll see when that actually comes in because all my other Amazon packages came in before. So I want to set the camera up on the tripod over there, and we're going to start cutting. Now we're doing a time lapse.
Alright, so I believe I'm mostly done cutting here. Yeah. I cut out a bunch of stuff off on this side because I didn't need all that. I just kind of needed to hold where the stream is so I could put more substrate there. I cut out this so I could put substrate here. I cut out this little bit here. I'm trimming it so you can see it better. The top of that there. Because, um, oh, that end over here as well. Because I completely forgot that I need to put the hose in there for the pump. So if I grab the pump from over here, I have it sitting on the lid. I pour the box out as you can see. So this is my first time actually just putting the pump in there. I have to do a little bit of shaving down for the cord there. Maybe that, or I just scoot the pump over there and just run the cord straight up out this little hole right there. Uh, I didn't do any cutting here because since I'm going to add more foam, there's no point making this lower. But my goal is to have the pump sitting in there, then have it open on both sides right here and over here. It kind of have a little archway so I can put dirt and uh, plants and stuff up there. And then as the water is coming out of the stream this way, it'll go into the water, kind of circulate around, then come back into the pump. And my original idea was to have the pump back here so I can shove uh, filter medium and good uh, beneficial bacteria. Like those little bio balls, I think they're called. Something like that. Or the equivalent of such. I'm in there. So it's kind of like a filter. So I'll be relying on the beneficial bacteria and the plants mostly for filtering this entire setup and we're gonna see how that goes. I'm gonna try to my best to stick it back there, make the cord work without bending the wires too much. Make that work. Um, I cut this out. Since I'm using a knife, it's not like the most precise thing. So I just have to pump out of here again. But if you kind of look at it like this, not exactly the most level thing, but it's kind of going down. But it's got some bumps here and bumps here that are uh, stopping it. But I can put down some stone or some of those uh, pea pebbles I have and kind of work it out. A lot of cutting, a lot of shaving, a lot of things I still have to make work. But I'll do that off camera. There's no point adding it to a time lapse. So. Alrighty, so it's actually the next day. For some reason, Amazon was super fast with their deliveries. So. Uh, today is the seventh, so I got two day shipping for some reason, but that's super cool. So I got another can of the Great Stuff Pond Foam. Uh, I'll kind of show you guys what I'm going to do with that here in a second. Uh, kind of touch up some spots and change up some things that I noticed I kind of screwed up. Um, it's really my first time really using this kind of foam, as I mentioned before. So I'm getting used to how it's being used, and also like, how it grows, uh, expands, and stuff like that. Also, I just kind of slacked and um, ignored a couple spots, and that didn't work out. But I also did go to the pet store, tied to go out today, and I got a couple more things. I got these Fluval Biomax, uh, like bio balls. Some, or something like that. Let me get close to the camera there, see if it focuses at all. But these little things for uh, beneficial microbacteria to kind of hang on to and help filter the water and clean it up. So that will again kind of help me eliminate the need for a pump. And I also decided to get these little uh, Tetra Bio Bags. These are super cheap. I think they're like seven or eight dollars. Like so I'll see if I can shove these in that little crevice there. I'm going to put the pump and see how well those work. Okay. And they don't work at seven dollars. It's not a huge loss there. And if you don't uh, go to the Tide Iguana, they have a little uh, discount area. So I got this awesome piece of driftwood for ten dollars. So I want to see how I can incorporate this into the enclosure. All right. So I realize the lighting here is pretty terrible. What I'm gonna try to do is if I can set up a lamp over there in place of the Xbox. Alrighty. The lighting is questionably better now. So I did cut out the little area back there, and that is where I completely forgot to put the hose for the pump. So that's gonna go down in the foam and come out about right here. Which also brings up the point that I need to increase this a bit more because that's too low. The hose will be out here, so the pump will be circling uh, water there and then will go down the stream there. And we're gonna see how well that works. Alrighty, so we ran out of memory on the camera last night. So. Alrighty, so we ran out of memory on the camera last night, so I went ahead and did all the foam. Uh, off camera and I finally got the lamp over here so we actually have some halfway decent lighting. So, I went ahead and put a bunch of spray foam back here and it's not exactly perfect but once I put uh, the sheet of plastic here for the stream and a bunch of the stones and stuff those little imperfections are not going to matter. Um, I put some foam up here and around this so that should all be good 
and I went ahead and put the tube in there that the stream will come out of, like I forgot the first time. And I put a bunch of uh, extra tube on here so I could tape it up there so that it stayed in the right orientation, which was really hard to do because nobody was home for like five minutes. So I had to hold this until somebody came home and then I yelled at them to go get duct tape for me. But anyway, we got that done. I put a bunch of foam here. I'm going to go ahead and call this the shape. I'm not going to bore you guys with any more time-lapse footage of that. And hopefully when um, I cut all this up and everything's good to my liking, we can start cutting the plastic uh, for the stream here and start making the whole water system functional. So let's hope that all goes well. Alrighty, so I went ahead and got kind of ahead of myself here. So I already have the plastic sheet down, so I'm going to take this silicone and silicone it down on the edges here. And this is that's an old trash bag with a waterproof liner on it, which a lot of them do have. Like I have plenty of extra, so in case this doesn't work, I can just go ahead and cut another one, silicone it down. So typically when you are cutting film like this and it has all these pockets here, it's not as waterproof as this solid piece here. So that's what I'm kind of worried about over here, but if that doesn't work, screw it. I'll figure it out. So I have it covering the bottom and the edges there. So I'm hoping that in about an hour, hour and a half after that silicone dries, we can fill this area up with water, see how waterproof this whole foam actually is. Hope about an hour, hour and a half, we can test how all of this works and we can get to the fun stuff with all the plants and the soil and all that. And I do want to like have you guys know, make sure you're wearing gloves and like clothes that you really don't care about when you're working with like the silicone and foam and all that stuff. Because last time I was spraying foam, I completely ruined that green shirt I had. Because I was covering all this foam residue and then on my hands, I don't know how well it will focus. But I have these little bits of black everywhere. Now we wait for this to dry about an hour, hour and a half. And then we can test it. But again, thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe to my channel. And also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirk. As always, I'll see you next week.